them. All right, putting some stuff away. Let's um, let's finally do it. Moondrop Stellaris, we made it here. Johan Diaz, the best I am for metal. I don't, I don't do genre recommendations. I don't, I don't even know where to start with. What's the best I am for metal? Sorry, bud. Um, but yeah, let's um, come back to the table. And this one's gonna be hard to spin. This one's quite big, but we're gonna try anyway. All right, you ready? You ready? Ooh, let's see. We need it. That was not a bad spin. It, it landed in the wrong direction. There we go. Beautiful spin here for the moon drop. Stellaris. Um, so yeah, as pretty much everyone here already knows, this is Moondrop's latest IM. This is also a planar driver IM, and a lot of people are pretty excited to get a Moondrop tuned IM with the planar driver in the game. And finally, they're here with the Stellaris. Now, interestingly, I'm actually surprised by this. The price in the Stellaris is coming in quite low, 110 bucks for another 14 point something millimeter planner. They claim it's a 14.5 millimeter. I feel like the claim of the size of those planner drivers just keeps incrementally getting bigger with each new one. I assume it's still all the same driver, but anyway, um, 110 bucks on this is actually a pretty competitive price. Another thing that was interesting to me is that on their page, and maybe we can go over here and check this out together. Da, da, da. Oh, this is actually the Shenzhen, the Shenzhen audio listing. Uh, they sent it in for review, by the way, shout out to Shenzhen Audio. I do have a link to them in the description down below. Um, but in here somewhere, uh, where was it? Da, da, da. They described, yeah, right here. Uh, we decided to apply this architecture, referring to the planar drivers, to our existing Starfield line. So Moondrop, at least somewhat internally, is um, pairing the, the Stellaris in with the Starfield and, and considering them similar products, which is interesting. Um, obviously the aesthetic is, is pretty similar, so maybe that's not too shocking. And the price I think is actually similar to the, the Starfield. So maybe those are a few things that they have in common with the Starfield. Um, sound wise, I don't expect it's going to sound like the Starfield based on what I've seen of the frequency response, but let's see how it graphs on my rig. And we'll also see what comes inside the box. Anything worth checking out here in the back? Uh, I mean, they do have a, a cheater. There's, here's a spoiler of their graph of it. We'll see again how it measures on my setup. They've got this really, really elaborate, very long uh, drawn out diagram of a planar driver I am. Maybe a little bit excessive, but uh, oh, interesting. They've got this thing here called out as a tuning sponge. Okay, I shouldn't be too surprised by that. All right, enough, enough dilly-dallying. Let's see what's inside the box of the Stellaris. Got your QC card right on. Glad to, glad to see that. Ooh, nice. They've actually included this little carrying case, which um, I've talked about this carrying case before because it came with my Moondrop, Kato. Uh, what are some other? I feel like it came with at least, I have two of these. Um, and I like this carrying case quite a bit. It is simple. Um, it's got a little magnetic clasp on it, but it's like the right size. This is pocketable and just about large enough for most IMs. And uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty happy to see them include that, especially again at 110 bucks um, for a planar driver IM with that carry case. That's pretty nice. That seems to be extraneous packaging. Um, we've got a few pieces. There's a, there's a lot to this packaging that probably didn't need to be there. Hopefully I didn't miss anything, but let's uh, let's see what's inside here. I'm assuming a cable and tips, because I didn't see that elsewhere. Hopefully I didn't miss it somewhere. Let's see. All right, there's our tips. And even more paperwork, including, this looks like a, a postcard. You can send to all your friends. It's kind of cool art. I'll give this one a, I'll give this one not just a pass. I think this is one of Moondrop's cooler arts, if I'm honest. Give it a close up again. That's cool. I dig that. Thank you, Moondrop, for not creeping me out. Um, move this stuff to the side. Ooh, the QR code for the enthusiast out there. One, two, three. There's your chance. Uh, what's in the middle of that? Wait, what is in the middle of that? I need my reading glasses. Bizarre. Okay. Um, enough dilly dallying. What do we got here? That's the wrong camera. Um, 
We have foam tips, which is interesting that they've included a full set of foam tips. And in fact, in the marketing material, the photos that we were just looking at, I don't know if you noticed, it looked like they were showing the Stellaris with foam tips. So I don't know if that is a precursor to what to expect. Maybe they think that the, the, the Stellaris is best with foam tips. Um, I am going to measure it without foam tips because all of my graphs are done without foam tips. Oh my gosh, come out of here. I'm going to have to completely destroy this bag. A, a shame, but yeah, looks like they've got three different sizes of foam ear tips, small, mediums, and larges, and they are seem like nice ear tips, but not a big fan of foams myself. These I'm also curious about because this is a new ear tip um, from Moondrop. I've seen, you know, of course there was their, the classic Moondrop style, and then they introduced the spring tip, and here it looks like they've got now yet a third style of ear tip, and actually curious if this might just be the same ear tips that soft ears is selling this seems a lot like the soft ears tips hold on real quick wait do i have one handy don't but yeah this looks a lot like soft ears tips which are really nice tips actually um so that is a nice inclusion curious why they didn't go with uh, spring tips um why they went with this other new style of tips. Is this replacing spring tips? Probably not. Um, you know, I will ask about that one. Maybe I can get an answer by the time I do the review, but you get your three sizes of that. I've got that order messed up a little bit, but let's take a look at this cable here with the Moondrop Stellaris. This looks like a pretty nice looking cable. Looks in, looking very, uh, Moondrop SSR-ish, but it is different. I actually was expecting this to be exactly the same as the Moondrop SSR cable, but it is a little bit different. I don't know if it's obvious there, so I'll zoom in here, and maybe you can tell that there is like alternating blue and copper coloring inside the cable, the way that it's wound up, and it's actually a little bit more obvious down there. I like that look. Okay. Otherwise, I feel like the behavior on this does feel exactly like the Moondrop SSR cable, um, which can be a little bit memory prone up here, um, just out of the packaging, but I think this will work itself out quite nicely over time, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, but yeah, I generally love the Moondrop SSR cable. You've seen me put it on a number of expensive IEMs just because I think it's such a well-behaved cable. And I guess I'm quite happy to see it on this IM. Uh, you do still have, unfortunately, this relatively large Y split. It's kind of unnecessary, but I don't know. I've also gotten used to it and it doesn't bother me too much anymore. They have added a chin cinch. The SSR cable typically does not come with a chin cinch, so that's a nice addition. And it does seem to stay in place quite well. Um, so that's good. And then, of course, you've got your preformed air hooks and your very standard two pin connectors. These are, I would say, my favorite two pin connectors is, is just a style like this. It's a minimal style. Um, I know it's plastic and some people like the more metal styles that they'll put on some other ones. But um, I think the size of this I actually quite like. Uh, gives you a little bit more flexi flexibility, that's the word, in terms of fit. But otherwise, let's take a look now here at the ear pieces of the Moondrop Stellaris as I unceremoniously boop them out. They've been booped. Um, and there you go, there are your earpieces. I will say initial impression is these are a little bit larger in the hand than I expected. Look at the cavity on that thing. Uh, Moondrop, well, let's, let's pull in the do news for a comparison real quick. I'll just pull in one of them so you can kind of get a sense. I think, am I looking at the right? Yeah, this is the, the left channel. Where's the top? Hold on. Oh, interesting, that's the top. Uh, so that is the size comparison here of the Talos versus the Stellaris. I take the tip off the Talos real quick so we're doing a more direct comparison. And you can see that the nozzle here on the Stellaris is quite lengthy. The body is otherwise kind of similar in design, but a little bit bigger up top here. Um, it is interesting. In, in, just visually looking at them, they look like they're pretty comparable in size, but in the hand, the Stellaris definitely feels like the, the larger, chonkier earpiece. Curious to see how that fits, um, but we are gonna hook this thing up and actually measure it first, let's see. It's interesting that this is the top to bottom. I assumed 
that this would be like the top to bottom. So that would be the front and that would be the back, but no, and that's the top to bottom. So this is the front and that's the back. Cause you can see that's where the two pin connector is. Uh, is this the right L? That looks like an L, this is my L sign. I quite like the look of this, although that is, hmm, hmm. There's something about uh, the way this is coming together that, I don't know, what do you think? It's really tall, right? Um, so I was mentioning that I like these shorter, uh, these shorter plastic two pin connectors um, because the flexibility that it gives me is I can heat this cable up and bend it down so that it, it starts to bend here and gives you a little bit tighter of a bend. Um, not necessary in all IMs, but it's certainly beneficial with some. I'm curious, my initial impression is that it will be beneficial here in the Stellaris given how tall that looks. Um, we'll see how it fits in a little bit. Uh, but again, I do want to give this a measure before I start getting into that. Um, we do have uh, a bit of a, a notch on the nozzle so that it will hold the ear tips in place well. Appreciate that. Uh, and these ear tips, I guess I didn't really describe them much except to say that they're pretty good. Um, what I will say is that they have a nice grippy texture to them. Like these are grippier than your average ear tips. A little bit less grippy than something like um, uh, Asla Zelastex, but not a lot less grippy. It's it's pretty similar to Zelastex. I, I find that they don't pick up lint as much as Zelastex if they are indeed the same ones as the soft ears tips that I've bought. Um, but they are, they are nice and grippy, which can add to the fit security, which might actually be why they're on this set. We'll see. Uh, give it the roadie wrap. Yeah, I can say these ear hooks are a little bit aggressive at the moment with this, but there you go. There is your moon drop Stellaris. Hold on. Let's gotta give it a beautiful product shot. Come on. There we go. Moon drop Stellaris. Roadie wrapped for your pleasure. Okay, let's graph this thing. Um, yeah, these ear hooks, you can see that they are basically like curving past the IM like that. That's that's the thing I'm gonna I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to play around with that because that is suboptimal. <laughs> uh, to say the least. But yeah, we'll play around with that. Let me put this stuff away real quick. Talos, you will go to the side. And the microphone, you will enter into frame. All right, let's go with our L channel. Those ear hooks are kind of obnoxious, I'll be honest. Got that inserted, and then let's see. Where are we at? Come back over. Here, I'll close all this stuff out real quick. Um, I think I saved all that. Let me just in case. Okay, remove all. Start from scratch, yes. Okay, let's do it. Let me set my levels over here. Looking decent. Put my measurement and uh, let's do our left channel. Looks kind of similar to the Talos in that it, it needs a little bit extra volume. So let me pump up the volume on that before I graph this again. And it did actually look like the insertion depth was a little bit shallow. So let's try that again. Okay. Uh, the insertion depth on that looks pretty good. Um, initial impression is that looks pretty brightly tuned. Interesting. Okay. Let's go for the right channel real quick. That one looks pretty well lined up as well. Let me double check though. 
Not too shabby. Uh, let me export these up to squig.link. Again, if you're not there yet, what are you, what are you waiting for? Go to squig.link. Um, and, well, it's not up there right this second, but it's going to be up there really soon. Hold on. Moon drop Stellaris. Let me just save these files. Let me export them. Right channel exported. Left channel exported. Can you feel the tension building? No? Okay. Starfield. Stellaris comes after Starfield. I'm alphabetizing in my head. Actually, not in my head. I'm just saying it out loud. Okay, we've got that. Let's go over here. Stellaris, we got a graph. All right, uploading it to squig.link in five, four, three, two, one. We're up on squig.link. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. We'll come back over here. Where are we at? All right, everybody together with me. Head over to squig.link. Uh, refresh that, make sure you're getting the latest juice, and you can search for the Moondrop Stellaris. Uh, and this is our frequency response of the Moondrop Stellaris. You can see how it compares versus my target frequency response here. Um, let me recolor this actually so it's in dark blue, nice and contrasty and easy to see. Um, and what can we gather from this graph? Again, I gotta actually listen to this thing to make real judgments, but we can start to make some guesstimations here. For starters, this mid-range, lower mid-range, this looks quite thin. Um, again, not too dissimilar from the Dioko and even the Talos, uh, honestly. Um, so looking like we're going with a similar tune there. You do still have a, a sub-bass boost there, which with certain music you might not even hear, but with, you know, especially electronic and stuff like that, you'll, you'll probably hear that digging deep. Um, here in the upper mid-range, you've got an interesting shout uh, here at around 2,000 hertz. Yeah, that's, I mean, let's uh, inspect it and find out exactly where this peak is at. Yeah, it looks like it's at around 2,200. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting place to put the the peak, and it's a pretty, pretty noticeable peak there. Um, here in the presence region, it does relax, and I think that's going to become extra relaxed uh, versus this upper mid-range lift that we've got here. And then the treble looks uh, somewhat neutral through here until the air frequencies, and at which point you have, you've got a lot of air here on the Moondrop Stellaris. Uh, how does this compare to the, the Talos that we just graphed? Well, let's pull that up real quickly. So it looks like, and this is with, okay, we've got the switch turned on. Let me turn switch off. Uh, for our initial comparison. So in comparison to the Talos, um, let me change the color. We'll go with red for the Talos. You can see that it looks like the Talos might be a little bit less, like they're both thin here in the mid-range, um, but it looks like the Talos will be a little bit less thin than the Stellaris. Uh, and then down here in the sub-base, looks like they kind of swap positions and then the, the Stellaris extends a little bit better, but I think that difference is probably likely to be negligible. Whereas this difference, I know it looks like it's roughly the same amount because of where this is at. I think this will be more impactful. Um, upper mid range. I mean, it looks like it's only a couple of DB there, but it does, the Stellaris does stand out to me there in terms of that, that mid range peak. That's a curious tuning. Um, here looks pretty similar, mid treble, similar. Uh, and then the air frequencies, that's where, again, that, that quite large increase here in the Stellaris will be interesting to hear. That, that is really high in the frequency range, right? Well, this peak is like, yeah, it's like 11,500 um, hertz, which is really high. Um, so it's likely not gonna sound sharp. Most likely, if that becomes a problem, it's gonna sound just maybe I mean, it could be it could be irritating, but I don't think it'll be like fatiguing, irritating. It'll just be like uh, it'll maybe give a bit of an oddness to timbre, um, but it could also just sound perfectly normal. It's kind of hard to predict, but 
my assumption is that that looks pretty bright. Um, let's pull up the talus with the switch turned on to see how that compares. You can see that the, the extended treble of the talus then kind of pulls in line close to the Stellaris, but still doesn't quite have that peak here um, in the extended range. But then that mid treble spike on the talus with the switch on is still, uh, uh, even in the face of the Stellaris's tuning, quite bright. So I think most of my time, my guess is I'll be listening to the talus like this versus the Stellara like this. And um, yeah, well, there you go. Interesting, okay. What do we think? Is is this what, what y'all expected from a Moondrop planar? Um, I'm gonna go over back to live chat, but yeah, that is the, the Moondrop Solaris. Again, shout out to Shenzhen Audio for sending this in for review. I do have a link to them in the description, but this is of course not a full review. Subscribe to the channel and ding the YouTube bell if you want to be notified when I do that full review, which will be coming soonish i promise i'll get to it uh, but yeah let me catch up with live chat uh, i see alexander saying talos no longer looks as bad in comparison interesting okay uh where one nation you're predicting i give it five out of five stars for the bright tuning we'll see we'll see about that um you know, the Dioko, as much as I enjoyed it, it was thin and bright for my taste as well. So these look a little bit thinner and maybe a little bit brighter than that. So we'll see. We'll see. Interesting choices from two companies that I generally expect to do um, exceptional jobs with tuning. I'll be honest. Dunu and Moondrop, I have pretty high expectations for it. Uh, and initial impressions, again, I don't want to judge an IM based on the graph, but initial impressions are... Uh, a little confused. Oh, I should do a fit test on this thing while I'm at it. Let me do the fit test here on the Stellaris. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. It feels like it's hanging out more than it looks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that is like, if you've worn, so it is exactly fitting the way I kind of expected. Um, based on just pictures, it looked to me a lot like, reminded me a lot of the fit of the Moondrop Sparks, which was their true wireless IM that they came out with last year, um, where it was basically kind of like this body with a long nozzle. And I found that the only part of the IM that came into contact with my ear was basically that long nozzle or like the ear tip and everything else just kind of pivoted on, on that ear tip and that is, exactly what we have going on here with the Stellaris. Um, it's not the most stable fit, but those ear tips are helping. The seal seems pretty good, at least now, as they're fresh ear tips, but I might actually try smaller tips. Hold on, let me, what did I do with those tips? Let me try smaller tips real quick and see if I don't get a little bit deeper of a fit. Yeah, it's a little bit deeper. Seal still seems pretty good, but yeah, you can see that's still very much pivoting. The way that it's pivoting like that, that's because the only contact point inside my ear is my ear canal, which might become, you know, fatiguing or you know, over time because the, the concha is not contributing to that fit security really at all. Um, oh, and then I guess the, the ear hook actually seems like it's not bad. I was worried that it was gonna to be too tall, um, but that actually seems like a decent enough curve. It's still a little bit too aggressive. Like I don't like that it's curving around on itself like that. I might still loosen it up a little. Um, that will mostly just be for uh, handling when I'm rolling, when I'm wrapping up the cable and stuff like that. As it is right now, it's likely to get itself tangled up. There you go, there is a Moondrop Stellaris in my ear. Hangs out a little bit. I'm gonna put them both sides so you can take a look. Do I look like Frankenstein's monster? A little bit, it's okay. It's Halloween. Um, all right, questions, let's go. Let me make sure I don't lose these tips because those are nice tips. Woody Woodman asking, do I have any preferences for IMs for gaming? Yes, my preference is I don't use IMs for gaming. Um, 
not a big fan. Uh, mostly because I, when I'm using headphones for just any personal audio for gaming, it's usually when I'm playing uh, a team game and I need to like talk with people and having my ears occluded with an IM while I'm talking, I don't find comfortable. So I do not use IMs for that at all. Lucker, you agree with me. You're saying that is one of the best Moondrop box arts. I totally with you. I think Moondrop knocked it out of the park with that artwork. Very cool looking. I even like the um, the Stellaris like logo. Like it's kind of a cool. It's a good look. Good job. Whoever did that. Alexander, thank you for the uh, the encouragement. That was a better spin than the rest. Je saying the Stellaris probably has one of the prettiest box designs I've ever seen in a planar and this far subjective. Well, I agree with you. So we're getting close to objective. My life matters saying it looks like Thea Avia's Legacy 5 case. I'm trying to remember what case came with my Legacy 5. Um, Thea Audio, for a while, they were including pretty nice little carry cases. They were a little bit bigger than this Moondrop one, um, but they were still nonetheless quite good. I like those. Is your ad saying surprise? Kind of surprised they didn't include spring tips i'm i'm surprised as well especially actually the more i think about it the more i feel like spring tips actually would make sense on this set because one of the things i like about spring tips is that they're short and they will um, reduce the overall length of the nozzle and the nozzle on this thing is not short this is a very long nozzle um, so i'm looking around me to see if i have spring tips with a reach i don't otherwise i would show you because like you can even see here Right, you can see where the end of the, the 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 earphone is is right here, and this tip is adding like an extra I don't know I want to say like four to five millimeters of length on top of that. Whereas the spring tips would probably cut this back by about three millimeters, um, which would then mean that this very long nozzle would feel a little bit less long inside of the ear. Uh, Lucker, you're confirming for me that they, they are soft ears tips. They call them super clear or something. Okay. Ultra clears. Uh, Alexander, no, they did not include the coupler tips. Oh, Don Cornetto, you said that they explicitly said that they were soft ears tips on the, on the website that I had opened and clearly didn't read. Let's see. Let's go back here. Looking for confirmation. Tell me about these tips, please. And those are MIS tips, yeah. Da, 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 nothing about tips. Or if there is something about tips, I'm just scrolling right past it. Uh, comes with two kinds of ear tips, MIS and UC tip. What's the UC tip? High liquid permeability silicone ear tips. Ultra clear tips. They're developed by soft ears. Okay, cool. They fit more snugly in the ear canal than ordinary silicone ear tips, ensuring lossless sound and bass under pressure. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to try them with spring tips to see if it's like obvious to me why they chose those instead of spring tips. Because again, based on the fit, I kind of expect spring tips will actually work a little bit better for my ears, but we'll see. Hey, Jerk is saying it's a little gaudy, but in a charming way. I love the aesthetic of these. Hopefully the treble isn't too wild. Yeah, I do like the aesthetic quite a bit of these as well. Um, I think it's actually a really good look. That's that's off camera slightly. Like I like this blue, this blue paint that they initially did a similar design with the Starfield. I didn't like the pattern that they put on the Starfield. Um, this is really quite neat and tidy, so I like it a lot. Reminds me more of the Stardust, which I like a lot as well. It's a good look.
Talkie Tron saying, you think that's a chunky Y split? The effect audio Y splits will bruise your sternum and stop a bullet. Well, protection's good, I guess. Ooh, hey, Jerk, you're, you're, you're saying you're a big fan of the long stems. All right. Winter One Nation, that's not nice. <laughs> Moondrop Chip Chip Chipalaris. Um Yeah, I know Moondrop's IMs kinda have a a reputation for like paint chipping and stuff like that. All I can say is I've got a ton of Moondrop IMs. They're all fine, but obviously I'm not I'm not living with them day to day, maybe as much as some people are. Although, you know, I've got like the, the SSR and the Stardust, which I've used quite a bit. They still look pretty clean for me. Um I have heard that maybe like your environment might actually make a difference in terms of like how humid it is where you live. I do live on the coast, but it's not very warm here where I live. So that could factor into it, but it has not been an issue for me. Ravi Sharma saying, hopefully it fits my small ears. I mean, I do think that because of this long nozzle, um, it, this is likely to fit well into most ears. Um, and the way the Etymotic does, right? They just, they kind of, I mean, this, this is going to go pretty deep with just this small, narrow um, nozzle. It's going to go through most of the folds of your ear pretty easily before you run into this body here. And even this body here is not especially large. This is smaller than like the Timeless or even the Lit Shure S12, I think. Alexander, you said it's not etymotic if you don't feel violated. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to fit as deep as etymotic, um, even though I just compared it to etymotic. Um, Uh, a jerk is saying, can those get in deeper? Given the nozzle length and shape, it may be intended to for a deeper insertion. And I think I'm just trying to rationalize. I mean, let's um, let's put that to the test real quickly here. I mean, I've got the small ear tips on here, so if it's going to fit any deeper with any ear tips, this would be the one that it will. But I don't, and I feel like that's where I would normally fit an IM. And could it go deeper? Well, the, the body has not yet contacted my concha, so potentially. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's maybe a little bit deeper, but not much. I don't know. You can, you can certainly try it, but I don't think that, I don't think it's intended to be deep fit like an Eddie. Um, so try that at your own risk and be careful you don't lose any ear tips inside your ear. Alexander asking, can I compare those graphs to the graphs on the box? Sure. Why not? Let's, um, let's pull the box back up. Here's our Moondrop Stellaris box. Here was their frequency response. Um, as you can see, I was trying to pull up my mouse and look at it. That, that doesn't work, bro. Um, I mean, it is, they are, you know, indeed showing that they've got, you know, fairly polite base versus this target, which I assume is that, no, no, that actually showing there. Wait, hold on. Which graph is which? I told you I'm not good at reading the small stuff. What is this even supposed to be versus? Starless versus... It's, it's, Stellaris versus the target response. I don't recognize that as Moondrop's typical target response, which is why I'm, I'm a little confused. Maybe that is Moondrop's target response, and I'm just reading it incorrectly. But yeah, they're showing that it's basier than their target. Uh, they do show that upper mid-range lift uh, and treble peak, um, but I do think that they are maybe being a little bit kind to themselves with the way that they're drawing it there. Because if I look 
at uh, our measurement, let's um, pull this back up. This is what we got. Now, even if we assume, you know, let's give it the old IEF comps. This is roughly what you should expect the Stellaris to look like when Critical measures it. Um, maybe the treble looks a little bit less scary, but it's still it's still pretty elevated versus their graph. Now they might be using one of those newer grass rigs that has extra dampening in the treble. Um, so there is that, but yeah, I don't know. It's not far off, but it does look like it does look like what's on their box is a more um, optimistic version of it. Fun Cronia saying SSR PTSD coming in. Hey, I love the SSR, but I understand not everybody does. That's right, Z Rat. I do like the SSR. But it's fine if you don't. We're cool. Uh, Ace Cal saying, What's up with the trend of taking a dip out of the lower mids lately? I don't know, man. People. People think that the lower mids don't don't count. They don't matter. That you can just sacrifice them to the gods of sub bass, and no one will mind. But you know what? I mind. I like my lower mids. I even like a little bit of mid bass. I don't need a lot of it. Just don't take it away and give it all to the sub bass. The sub bass is cool. Don't get me wrong. But a little mid bass and a little lower mids warmth goes a long way. Seems like people are not super excited about the frequency response here on the Solaris. Uh, again, we got I, I got to give it a listening test to, to to say one way or the other. I liked the Dioko, right? Maybe this will be like the Dioko, but in a shell that is not super ornamental. But we'll see. Where one nation say, nope, I did not expect a bright planar. J. Yi saying, called Stellaris for a reason, stars, bright, herder. I see what you did there. Uh, but yeah, I would say summary of the, the vibe in the chat is not super enthused, I'll be honest. Um, and I get it. Z-Rad saying, yeah, the fit looks like the Sparks. Yeah, very very much reminds me of the Sparks fit. Probably even longer nozzles, to be honest, on this. Holly Boy, you, I guess you agree with me, saying that I own the Sparks, and that's a terrible fit. It's not great. It's not... Is it terrible? I complained about it, but I don't think I would say it was terrible. Uh, and Escal, you're saying that uh, you thought the Sparks fit was okay with the smallest tips. Zerat asking, can I try it with spring tips? Yeah, let me go grab some spring tips real quick. Uh -huh. I had to get up for it, but I can do that. Well, I should be going to bed pretty soon. Um, all right, so I've got my spring tips. You can tell I like spring tips. Um, let's throw them on the Stellaris for good measure. And I'm gonna start with the smalls. So maybe just to kind of show you that difference I was talking about in terms of length. 
I think this will be obvious. We'll see. So these are both small ear tips. Um, and you can see that the spring tips are indeed a couple of millimeters shorter. Which I feel like with this I am will be a good thing, but let's find out. Yeah, I feel like that does fit a little a little better, but to be honest, not that different. It's still still very much um, pivoting here on the ball of my ear canal entrance. So let's go with this one over here. This is with the standard tip. Yeah, this one does feel like it's hanging out even more. Probably doesn't look that different for you on the camera, but yeah, I want to say win for spring tips in my opinion, but I would be curious to get their take on why they went with these tips instead. Uh, Nick, Nick Knack asking what kind of car do you have? Um, I drive a Mazda Miata. It's an older one. Well, not that old. It's like 2007, but it's kind of old at this point. I, I kind of realized lately it's like a, it's a 15 year old car, um, which I know growing up for me, a 15 year old car was an ancient car. Altair, how does it sound with J-pop music? Not answering that. Edwin Chan asking, what, in my opinion, what are the pros and the cons of planar IMs? I don't, I don't like making a lot of generalizations about driver technology, um, just because different imp the implementation is really what matters. I don't, I don't associate too much with planars. I will say that I haven't yet heard a planar that has as good a base as the best dynamic drivers, but I would say that the planar base that I've heard so far is probably on par with your average dynamic driver. So it's decent. It's pretty good base, but maybe not the best base. Um, and then the frequency responses, like the channel matching seems to always be off with these planars, but it's not a thing I can hear. So I don't really care about that. Um, I don't know. That's about as much as I can give you in terms of generalizations about planars. They seem like they might be harder to tune. Maybe there's, maybe there's the thing where balanced armatures really do let, uh, manufacturers get really specific frequency responses that they're looking for. Um, it seems like all these planars kind of have more or less the same frequency response with a little bit of tweaks. I haven't really seen anything that's obviously better than just the default planar tuning. So that might be a, a difficulty. Livestock, you're saying a huge con for planar is the timbre. I gotta be honest, I don't, I don't associate any timbre specifically with IM planars. Really, any planars. I mean, headphone planars. I have started to pick up on like a, a pluckiness with the treble, um, but I've also heard dynamic drivers that have that same pluckiness. Like um, the Focal stuff, kind of has a similar pluckiness. So I think a lot of that just comes from the tuning more so than the driver itself. Altair saying, I'm checking HBB's graph and you have different tunings. Could you have defective unit? Well, let's do that comparison real quick because I think we can actually do that comparison pretty well. So um, here is, let's take that off for now. Here's my Stellaris graph. Go over to HBB's graph. He's also got the Stellaris graph. Um, Stellaris, he's got it with foam tips, interesting. Oh, he's also got it with silicone tips. Okay. Um, so here's his graph versus my, oh, that's, let's sort this out. Um, and then let's pull up my target just for reference. So we're both looking at the same target, although you'll see in a bit that this won't be super useful, but for now, um, we see, you know, a similar lower mid range scoop, although it does look more pronounced in my graph versus his. Um, but there is still that lower mid range scoop going on. 
uh, here in the upper mid range. It looks like he's getting um, getting the peak at about the same spot that I'm getting. It's not quite. Oh my gosh, my clicking is off. Close these spare tabs. Um, yeah, it looks like his isn't quite as acute looking, um, but it looks like it's in roughly the same spot. So that's not too shocking. Um, I don't know. I'll be honest. This looks pretty similar to me. Um, where they are, they're they're always going to be a little bit different, um, just on the basis of um, we're using different microphones. And one thing that you can do is you can apply this HBB comp. Again, click the this target. You'll see this weird squiggly line show up. And then come down here next to target HBB comp. Click that squiggly line, and it will bend the curve in a way that should match a little bit more close, closely to his graphs. Although uh, based on this, it doesn't seem to be necessarily giving us that so um, yeah could just be unit variants um, but it also doesn't look that different to me I think the biggest difference is going to be up here in this region where his looks a little bit more filled in from the the 2.5k peak down to uh, what is that like 5k whereas on my unit um, I'm getting you know I have that 5k peak but I've got a more pronounced dip there but um, no, I wouldn't say that this looks faulty to me. I think this looks within range of what I might expect from one unit to another, from one measurement rig to another. There's just always going to be some difference there. Uh, Andrew asking, do I have an Oracle Mark II? I do not. If you think, if you want me to review an Oracle Mark II, join Linsoul's Discord server and let them know. Uh, JM, can I compare it to the Dioko graph? If I didn't already do that, yeah, let's do that real quick. Um, da, da, da. So there you go. Oh, we got blue on top of blue. We can do better than that. Purple, no, 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 yellow. Okay, that'll do. So it looks like here in the low end, very, very similar to the Dioko, um, but up here in the upper mid range, there's gonna be a pretty significant difference. In fact, I would say in the treble, you know, there's peaks in kind of different spots. It looks like the extended treble is, the air is gonna be a little bit more pronounced in the Stellaris. Um, I don't know, this doesn't look too far off from a Dioko, although, this difference right here is likely going to be pretty audible. What effect that has, I have a hard time predicting. But yeah, it looks a lot more similar to the Dioko than something like, let's go back to the Timeless as an example. Oh man, that was a, that was a mistake. I need to keep. I don't need blue on blue. Okay, green on blue. There we go. Uh, again, here, compared to the timeless, um, like we looked at before, I'm going to turn that comp off. Um, you can see that the mid base on the timeless is a big, big difference. Here, you know, there's still, the Stellaris is the, the shoutiest of the bunch. Um, but maybe not as big a difference as, as it seems. Um, but this right here, this difference is going to be very pronounced. A jerk saying a Miata is always the answer. I kind of agree. A Miata is a very fun car for not a lot of money. All right, folks, it is getting pretty late here. Real quick, Rob Hawk, Soft Focal is releasing a wireless over ear headphone. Was that one at Can Jam? I don't think it was at Can Jam. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, I think we're getting late. We're getting up to my bedtime. I'm an old guy. 
so thank you all for tuning in. Again, this is not a full review of the Stellaris or the Talos or the Tin Hi-Fi T2 DLC. If you want to see reviews of those things, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and hang around. Um, you could also join my Discord server, which I've got linked in the description down below. If you're here late night with me on chat here on YouTube, you might as well be with me on Discord. Um, otherwise, have a good night, and I'll see you in the next super review. Cheers.